Hello uh, and welcome to the lectures uh, or series of strength of material. Uh, this is the second lecture uh, in the series of transformation of plane stress uh, and the Mohr circle. If you will recall our previous lecture, we have completed the normal stresses and shear stresses at any oblique plane. Uh, let me give you a recap that we have studied that if we are having a strained member and we are applying stresses on this member in this way. And I am interested to find the stress at plane AB. I will be able to get the normal stress on this plane as well as the shear stress on this plane. Now, if I am having a case, let's start with the condition that I am having a body and I am applying, let's, I am applying a force of, uh, let's, 50 megapascal stress is here. So, uh, let me tell you that this is the topic where we are going to complete one of the important concepts that is the principal stress. Here we will try to understand that what is the principal stress. So I am showing one case where I am showing that this is the state of stress in my system. So I know that any fiber which is in this fashion that means perpendicular to the direction of the force is going to experience the maximum stress. If I am considering any fiber in this way, the normal stress on this plane will be zero because the force direction is tangential to this. So this, these members are going to experience the, uh, no, no, there will not be any normal stress on, on these fibers, but all these fibers is going to experience the maximum normal stress. And any fiber in between these two, suppose I am having a fiber here, that is going to experience both normal stress as well as the shear stress but the magnitude of normal stress on this plane will be less than 50 value because this 50 is going to be break into the normal stress as well as in the shear stress and the magnitude of this normal stress depends on the magnitude of theta as we know that the formula for the normal stress defined by sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau sine 2 theta. <coughs> this says that if I am applying any shear stress, this tau will exist. In this case, this will be 0 as well as sigma y will be 0. So my final formula will become sigma x by 2 plus sigma x by 2 cos 2 theta. If I am going to change the theta value, the magnitude of normal stress will change. If theta is 0, that means the plane is this one the formula will say that normal stress will be equal to sigma x. If I am going to consider this case, the theta will become 90 and as theta will become 90, this two term will be sigma x by 2 minus sigma x by 2. The total stress will be 0. And in between these two positions, there will be certain value of this normal stress as well as certain value of this tangential stress. But I am just going to focus only normal stress at this time. So in this way, I know that if I am having a strained, stressed condition and I am going to check stresses on different planes, suppose I am going to check stress here, 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 here. In this way, I am going to change the direction of or orientation of my plane. And for every plane, if I will calculate the normal stress, definitely there will be a plane where the magnitude will be maximum. In this case, this is the condition where we are having maximum value. So in this way, we will try to find the maximum stress plane that will going to give us the principal stress. So let me start the lecture. Here I am showing you three pictures. <clears throat> in the first picture, I am applying force along x direction only. So I know that the maximum stress will be along the AB plane. Because A1, B, A2, B, A3, B, A4, B, A5, B and A6, B are having different angle and the force is acting in this direction or stress is acting in this direction, the maximum stress will be along the AB plane. And along B, A6, B, it will be 0. So for along A6, B, normal stress will be sigma N will be 0. Second, if I am having forces along the Y direction, you know, here, this this plane is going to have the maximum stress and remaining planes are having less stress. So I know that in this case, this A, A3 will have maximum stress. Now let's, a condition arises where we are having both the stresses. In this case, we are not able to say that either the maximum stress will be here or here or in between these. 
two plane and definitely the condition will not be this plane or this plane there will be a plane with a particular orientation which is having the maximum normal stress that plane is basically known as the principal plane and the stresses on that plane normal stresses particularly will define the principal stresses so i hope that you have understood that if i am having multiple stresses on my system there will be a plane which is going to have the maximum normal stress that has to be identified and how we can identify it's very simple as we know the formula for the normal stress and we know that this normal stress is a function of 2 theta what i will do i will simply differentiate my equation with respect to 2 theta when i will differentiate this equation with respect to 2 theta and i'll put it zero i will get one angle that will tell me that this is the angle where the maximum normal stress exists so when i am rearranging this i am getting that my 2 theta is 10 inverse 2 tau by sigma x minus sigma y let me tell you i have considered a case where all these stresses are acting on my system you might have a case where there is only two stresses one lets this is having a 50 value and this is having minus 10 value or the 10 value and this is compressive so i'll put minus 10 there's no shear if there is no shear in this case in this formula this tau will become zero if the tau will become zero accordingly the theta will come that will tell you the plane of normal stress so now I know that for this angular position, the plane will going to experience the maximum normal stress. And if I am interested to find the magnitude of normal stress, what I need to do, I have to put this theta value back to my normal stress equation. When I will put this value in this equation, I am getting this formula. So this is formula having a value sigma x plus y by 2 plus minus under root x minus y by 2 whole square plus tau square here you can see that there is a plus sign as well as a minus sign which indicate that there will be two value of maximum stress or i should say that one will be the maximum and another will be the minimum stress value so now if there is a plane how the two stresses will be there there will not be only one plane let me tell you when you are going to solve this theta value then you are getting a particular angle 10 has two value it may be in because we know that when we are going to see the quadrant the train 10 values having positive here as well as positive here the same value will appear two times in your system for two particular angle so the maximum and minimum value basically corresponding to the two theta value which i will get from this numerical or uh, from this 10 inverse 2 tau by sigma x minus sigma y you will understand this when I will solve a numerical problem but for at this stage you must understand that what is a principal plane a principal plane is a plane where we are having maximum normal stress and what is the magnitude of principal stress so there are there are two principal stresses maximum and minimum and the magnitude can be calculated using this formula so you have to remember this second formula if you will go back and see my previous video there i have mentioned that there are two numerical two formula for the normal stress and shear stress that you have to remember now i am requesting to remember this formula which is for the principal stress now let's quickly solve a problem here i am having a same problem which i have considered in my previous uh, um, video so this is a case where we are having three stresses this is 50 mega pascal 50 this is 10 and this is 40 as i have already explained that my sign convention convention says if this is x and y are tensile that will be positive if tau is in this way or the shear is in this way it will be positive so here x is acting away from the body or it is of tensile nature so i am going to take plus 50 y is going towards the body that means it's a compressive so i'm going to take minus 10 and my shear is the same as i have considered so it will be plus 40 
I am again requesting that it is very important for you to first define the different stresses stresses along with their sign. Normally for X and Y there will not be any problem because it is easy to understand that this is tensile and this is compressive but particularly for the shear you must understand that for my formulation because if you will follow any other book you may have this is negative but in my formulation this type of shear will be positive now i know the three value in i'm going to put this three value into my stress formula first i am going to calculate the position of the maximum normal stress so i'm going to put this value here and i'm when i'm solving it i am getting that my two theta is coming out 53.1 degree as well as the 220 233.1 degree this is my two theta again so this two theta actually when i am going to take a plane here of an angle theta my formula have a 2 theta value so as i am getting a value 2 theta here which is 53.1 that means my theta will be what theta will be half of this value and as in it will be equal to 26.6 degree so that means if i will i will i am having a plane which is 26 degree 26.6 degree uh, counterclockwise from this vertical phase or i will say that the normal of that plane is of 26.6 degree count in a counterclockwise direction from the x-axis that is a plane which is ha which will be having the maximum normal stress and the magnitude of that normal stress will be what so when i will put all the numerical value in my formula i am getting that the one value is 70 another value is minus 30 so let, let me explain that this 70 that means the normal stress here will be defined by the plus 70 now where will be this minus 30 i know here that the half of this will be 116.6 degree so and you can also check that if i am going to add 90 here i'll get the second plane so my second plane will be somewhere here but uh, how it is possible my element is only up to here so how i can make a stress plane here so don't worry this should not be the outside the plane any plane which is having a orientation parallel to this plane all the plane which are at this angle is be going to have a normal stress and that value of the normal stress will be what minus 30 minus 30 means the force will be look like so if i am going to, if i want to present this normal stress i can uh, do one method that this is the actual body which is having forces along this direction along this direction as well as shear so what i can do I can consider that a, a second body which is at an angle 26.6 degree here here I am going to make the second body and here I will show that this is the direction of my 70 and this is the direction of my 30 I am not putting minus here because I have already made this this is a compressive force so this is the state of the principal plane and the magnitude of principal stresses are 70 tensile and 30 compressive or 70 positive and 30 negative so this this in this way also we can represent the original element and the principal plane you may find this kind of convention in in book in addition to that you can also use just this plane and you can say that this is the 70 and any plane which is having angle because this this angle is what this angle is 116.6 degree actually this is 116 will be here <coughs> but as it is not inside the element any plane which is parallel to this plane is going to experience the same stress and any plane which is parallel to this plane is going to experience a normal stress of 70 megapascal so with this note i am just closing this session here we have discussed about the concept of principal plane in the next lecture we are going to talk about the uh, maximum shear stress plane uh, so I have, let me give you the introduction of the maximum shear stress plane that we have considered here that if we are having all the forces on the body and there will be a plane where we are having maximum normal stress. In similar fashion there will be a plane that is going to experience the maximum shear stress. Now do you think that the maximum shear stress plane and the maximum normal stress plane will be same? 
or it will be different so that can be calculated by differentiating the formula for the normal stress uh, shear stress which we have calculated in our previous class so i'll take that part in my next lecture so for this lecture uh, thank you